Hello, my name is Andrew Cook and I'm with Exaco Trading and we are the importer and national distributor of the Riga Greenhouse line from Germany. Today we are making a video, a DVD, that will supplement this manual in order to make you the, make the assembly process for you a lot easier, we hope. Um, it is important to know that if you have ordered one of these from us, that before you start, that you have the necessary uh, boxes. If you ordered a greenhouse without any accessories, then you would have received four packets, four boxes, and one would have all the long aluminum profiles in it, one would have the shorter aluminum profiles, those are doors and window kits. Uh, between those two boxes you would have a manual and all the screws and other hardware. You would also receive a bundle with all the curved profiles, which are like the roof supports for the polycarbonate. And then there is a big box, very narrow um, but very wide and long box that has all the polycarbonate glazing in it. If you also bought a base, which is an option, then you would receive the base in a separate box. Uh, as well as you could have bought some shelving and the shelving profile or the frame of the shelving would be in a plastic tube, a black plastic tube. Depending on how many shelves you bought, you would have that same amount of plastic tubes. And now let's us start with the assembly of the greenhouse. If you bought a foundation frame for your greenhouse, then you would have received an extra box which has four pieces that are basically U-shaped. And they would be attached, these foundation frame pieces are attached to the bottom of your greenhouse as you also received a a bag of hardware with quarter connectors for the foundation frame and some nuts and bolts. What we're going to do today is show you how to attach basically the foundation frame to the base profiles of your greenhouse. We laid out for Riga 2, which is our, one of our small greenhouses, the frame at the moment. And then we're going to show you how to attach that, uh, how, how to attach the foundation frame to the base profiles. The foundation frame to the uh, base profile. One thing is for sure is the U-shape of the frame goes to the outside. So what we do is we can take the foundation the base profile and literally swing it over, hinge it over the top of the foundation frame, making sure that the distance on both sides is about the same which is about an inch. Um, there's another way of doing it. If you have a much longer greenhouse, like a Riga 4 or maybe a 5, it might actually be better to just simply slide these two together. Um, of course, you might find that that's the only way to do it properly. You slide them over from one end to the other end. A tape measure, I can make the distance the same. This is about seven and seven eighths and this side is actually just about the same thing. The holes that have been drilled for the quarter connectors they should be just about on the on line up the hole with the edge of the of the foundation frame. To make life much easier we use a couple of self-tapping metal screws and we attach permanently the foundation uh, the frame to the profile and there's a little groove there's a little groove in the bottom of the uh, foundation profile uh, sorry the uh, base profile and what you can do is just uh, on a short piece you can just do two screws is fine longer pieces if you have a longer unit on a long unit you might put a screw every three feet or so. What we're going to show you now is how you would connect the two corners 
of the foundation frame with the base profiles on top of it. However, you need to know that in real life, you would actually build, once you have attached the foundation frame to the base profile on the back wall, like Alan is holding here, you would actually build that whole wall first. And when it is done, and you have it in the trench, and you put this in the trench too, what you would do is you slide the connectors in here, this is like a corner connector, in for the base profile. Those would be like that. This is how you hold it basically. Now what you do next, you slide in these bolts in the channel. You will have you make sure that your trench is big enough to do all this. And then what you do is you attach the corner connectors over the you slide these both in. They will fill up the whole corner. Both cases use a, you might be able to use a torque wrench, a, a socket wrench in the corner and in the trench. And you connect these. Doesn't matter which step you did first. You also have a little quarter connector that goes on the base frame, uh, sorry, on the base profiles, and you screw those in. It's a little connector plate with a little half inch Phillips head screws. foundation frame with connector plates and that is what you would do in all four corners when you go around. First what we're going to do when we start building the back wall is we attach the up door uprights or in the back wall it would be the window uprights to, and we, to the bottom. After attaching the two window uprights in the back wall the next thing we're going to do is develop, build one corner of one side of the back wall. What we're going to do first is inserting the polycarbonate panel. Now there is one thing to remember with all the polycarbonate when you get it. What you're getting is with the polycarbonate panels they are, have a protective layer, a small layer of plastic on it that you have to pull off. Usually it is a sort of a clear layer on the what we call the inside of the polycarbonate and a blue layer of plastic on the outside of the polycarbonate. We have already removed that to make things a little speedier. But uh, also on the polycarbonate, often you have words. And the words are in German, but it says the outside, or Ausseite. And that is the outside of the polycarbonate. This is the side that is covered with a UV coating. It's very important to have that on the outside. So you might always, if you have no words and you're taking the blue off, mark your polycarbonate with a pen to maybe know for it permanently remember what side is the outside and what side is the inside. So I'm putting that now into the base frame. I slide it in there and then I slide it into the door upright. It is important that the door upright is pretty straight so that we can do that nicely. Next thing we do, we set on top of it the crossbar. And the crossbar will be I slide it onto the polycarbonate, there. We're going to attach the crossbar with a one and three quarter inch screw, a Phillips head screw that you have been supplied, and through the door frame. And Alan will show you how to do that now. I recommend using just a regular Phillips head screwdriver on this, because if you install it with a power drill, you may strip out the top of that Phillips head and it's hard to get out from it, from it down in this groove. So what you do, there's a pre-drilled hole in this vertical unit. You look through, there's a groove in the middle of this uh, crossbar, horizontal crossbar here. What you want to do is 
slide it through, and maybe you can peek through the hole, make sure it's lined up in the uh, groove, and then just tighten it down. But don't tighten it all the way, leave it a little bit loose, and that'll help when you're putting this other panel in up top. So the next thing we're going to do is get the other pedal. This is one of the, the pedals with the curves. Also, again, make sure what is the outside, the Herion lettering on it. We are going to put that on the outside. We set it in the crossbar. And then we're going to slide that down into the, the upright. Okay. That went sm nice and smooth. Then we, then we can tighten the crossbar to the upright. Okay, the next, step, the next step is we're going to attach the curve, the outer profile. Some things to remember of this, bottom pro of this curve profile, one, it has only one channel. The other ones in the middle have two channels to put polycarbonate in. So one side is flush and the other one has a groove in it to put polycarbonate in. Now, how do you know what is the top or the bottom of this uh, curve piece? At the top, there is actually some grooves in it, some metal cutout that will attach to slide into the roof beam. At the bottom, there are no markings. Yeah, but another thing that helps you is there's a hole in this unit, again to attach the metal, the crossbar to, and that needs to line up with the crossbar, so that can be not be on the top. It's important that when you assemble your Riga greenhouse and you're going to use your corner curved profiles like this. This only has one channel on one side in it. The other channel, there's no, no channel in this. So these are corner profiles. One of your four corner profiles actually has two small holes, which I would call on the outside. They're near the top, so towards the top. These are actually to place your door connector in. So this unit, this particular corner profile, curve profile, should be in your right hand front corner next to your door. So this goes in the front panel. These go, cannot be used in the back of your greenhouse. It needs to be used in the front of your greenhouse. And it will be on the right hand side next to your door. Now the first thing we do in doing this, Alan, can you hold the top? Hold up. We are going to insert the corner connector that connects the base frame, the back base frame, and the bo and the ones for the side. Then I can insert, slide in the corner curves profiles. Nicely lined up everything. Now Alan will again at attach this curve to the crossbar with the one and three quarter inch screws. And once you have done one side, then you can do the other side. When assembling the back wall, it is important to remember that you need to insert the hex, uh, the bolt with the hex uh, heads into a groove in the horizontal support uh, because one is needed for the connection plates that will be used in the middle in the back wall, but you might also need one for a bottom shelf. And if you need one for the bottom shelf, you'd put in an extra one. Uh, because we are going to put a shelf on the other side of the greenhouse here, we are have put two bolts on this side instead of on this side. We only need one on this side. Um, in addition, you also need a bolt uh, two in the upright to connect to the top to 
put the correction plate at the top, but we also uh, need one in the middle. Now those you can insert from the bottom, so you can always go to the bottom, it's a little wider where the plastic connects with the uh, aluminium profile, you can slide those in, so that is not a problem. Here you just have to remember it. Okay, Alan, we can attach this again. After building the two side sections of the back wall, you need to complete the middle section. In order to do that though, you might have to move one section out a little bit. So you hit it a little bit so you get some more space. Then you will insert the middle section as it is in the manual. Again, remember the, where the words are goes to the outside. The UV coated thing goes to the outside. And this way, but I need to have a little bit more space, so I'm going to have to go out a little bit more. Insert it, yes. Alan can not hit it back. Okay, you are not, yeah, you can't hit it more. Okay, the next, the next thing is that we do, we also put in this uh, crossbar now that covers the top of the polycarbonate in the back wall. We're going to need a few bolts in here. And what we're going to need in here is three bolts. And the reason for that is you need one in the middle somewhere, which you're going to use to attach the window opener to. It, it's the opener that holds the back window in place. And you need one on each end to connect the connecting plate that keeps all these pieces in the back together. The next thing we do here, we bring in the connecting plates. So I'm gonna, what I needs to happen is these little plates, they are used for the connecting plates. So I have to bring in the bolt now from here, from one upright. I set that over, then this and this, all three. Um, Alan, you will need to, to hit the, this wall a little bit more in here because I don't have it. Okay. That is better. We tighten these down. Oh, losing. Okay. make sure that everything is tight if, when you tighten these down. This is a great tool, a little socket. 10 millimeter. It's a 10 millimeter one, that is what you will need. Okay, and we did it on one side, we'll do it also on the other side. That's it, you have done most of the back wall. Next what we do is we uh, insert the triangular piece 
that needs to go above the rear wall window. Um, I'll line that up in here. Then get my bar that I need to, uh, the crossbar that goes underneath, it needs to have two bolts in it so that you can attach it correctly. What we're gonna do. Okay. Now we're going to install the plates that holds the triangle, triangle and crossbar in at the top. What you're going to use is the two bolts that you've already slid down here. There's already two holes in it. And you need to line it up with the small screw holes at the top. Those are supplied in your kit. About a half inch long Phillips head screw. Secure that with a Phillips head screwdriver. Just screw them in there for now. Don't get them tight. That's so that you can still tighten this down and get the whole corner straight. Once you've done all that, just barely get them on there tight because you want to line up the other side before you tighten everything down. Once you've secured both sides, go ahead and make sure everything's even and then you can tighten down all your screws and nuts. Okay, the next thing we do, we uh, place the roof beam. Uh, what you will have to do is put one end of the roof beam on, the, uh, on a step ladder or, or sort, some sort of support to get it as level as you can. And then on the other side, we're going to slide the uh, two curved profiles that you, quarter profiles that you put in place, they have some s slits in it. And all we now need to do is to make sure that we attach those into the grooves. They line up with the grooves. And then, like that, very simple. Uh, and then there's a little plate, a little, yes, um, a little cover plate that we will put on the, out, on the outside here so that they don't come loose again. The cover plate looks like a little, uh, yeah, five-sided, no, yeah, five-sided uh, little cover plate with a couple of very small screws, they're half-inch screws that we're going to put on this side against it. What we're going to do now is secure the two corners. What you get is the L bracket, which is included in the kit, and two half-inch screws. Those are attached here to hold the corner together. What we're going to do now is slide the two pieces together. Put the L bracket in the corner, thread one screw in,
Make sure everything's lined up perfectly and then tighten it down. And now your corner is secure. This is the other side of the greenhouse. It goes together just the same way as the other. And these steps are going to be repeated on the corners of the other side of the greenhouse also. Okay, next we are now going to install several of the uh, center curved supports, profiles. However, you do not know which is really the bottom or the top. Uh, so in order to know for sure which end is the bottom or the top, pick up a curved center profile, that meaning two grooves, a groove on each side and line it up against the back wall and make sure that the curve lines up the same way. Then walk to the other end of the floor beam, floor profile and the roof beam and simultaneously slide down, attach the, uh, the supports and slide them down. We might use a rubber mallet to e make this process easier. Or your feet. Yeah. Give me that and use your foot. Yeah. It is essential in this process that you, you try to keep the angle as much 90 degrees as you can. If you go too much, hold on, see, if it goes too fast, then I can't slide very well. You can only slide well if you. So. Hey, Mark, you come hold it. And we go all the way to about the width, about 40 inches from the end. That's about right. And then you insert two more on the other side and one more on this side. After installing uh, all the uh, center curve profiles, three on each side, we can then 
start with building, inserting the large pieces of polycarbonate and um, it usually I don't uh, put a window in the uh, last section but maybe we will today on this particular unit because of the prevailing wind. You have to think of where are you going to put your windows in each of the greenhouses uh, depending on how many windows you have. Um, you want to put the window on that side of the greenhouse that gets generally the least wind. Uh, it's better to keep them away from the wind. So in this case we are going to start on this side first with a large piece of polycarbonate. What I'm going to do is after I removed all the plastic again making sure that the side with the writing on it is on the outside I'm going to insert it in the base channel form the channel in the base frame I lean it over and I go into the channel in the roof beam the next step is with one person on the inside pushing out and one person on the outside pushing in is to guide it into the channel in the back curved profile. Um, usually we start at the bottom with this and you try to hold it in there with your other hand. Okay, it's in there. Now we need to hold that in place and we can out with your foot. Okay, in order to keep the panels in their grooves while you are setting up the whole unit, we have found it to be rather easy to go ahead and install the lateral supports. Uh, that way these can be holding this bar curve together with the back and then these cannot slide apart. So what you do is you get your lateral support, one of your lateral supports, you have four of them, two for each side. You would normally install them later on where you have put all the carb polycarbonate in already. And they have holes, so they line up exactly 40 inches apart. So that's a nice thing. You can then slide a screw in for the bottom of the profile. At the bottom, go in there and slide it up, the screw up. And in the center, in the corner curve, you can actually slide the screw down from a little hole that's been made at the top here that you can slide then a screw down. So that's what we did and we tightened this level of support so that these two now stay in place. This way this side can be okay because now what we're going to do is when I have done this side one panel we're going to the other side and do a panel. Now what we're going to do on this side is we're going to put here a window and the reason I'm going to put a window here is that we're actually putting two windows on this side of the greenhouse. We'll put one in this first bay, a full panel here and then another window in this bay um, to get as much ventilation. This, this greenhouse is standing in a location where there's a lot of wind coming from the right hand side so we want to protect that. Now we're putting in one of the lateral supports in order to hold all the panels inside. Always a little tricky. Okay. Actually, Guys, we're having fun, but we have to do it. Merle, mm -hmm. does that thing look a little bit straight? Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, hey guys, uh, now we are going to show you how to install one of the windows in the greenhouse. Um, 
this would be the shorter panels that come with it and we I put it again first in the bottom then we put one of these big window bars connection bars on top of it Alan's got to hold it but when he you have to slide three screws three bolts in there one for each outside for the connecting plate and one for the automatic window opener to move over a little bit more. More. Oh, oh. Well, I guess we're not in perfectly. Otherwise. Ah, we are totally out on the next one, guys. Here. Yeah, hit it, Mel. Ah. Okay, no, a little too far. We went too far, guys from that one. Come back a little bit. Line it up with the other one there, on the other side. Okay. Good. Alan, can you attach this level support again? Please. Okay, the next thing we do, we are going to connect using the round plates, the window crossbar with the curved upright. Yeah, as you can see on the window, uh, on the little plate, there's a short distance and there's a long distance holes. We always use the long distance. And I use the ball. side now we do the other side okay I'm inserting first the bolt for the uh, second lateral support you always have to be two bolts in each center curve because there are two lateral supports one on the bottom one near the halfway and then the other one that I need for the plate on this side of the window support And now we're going to be building the front section. It goes in the same way as the rear section, and you want to build it before you put in these two last panels. After completing the front section, or the front panel, what we're going to do now is insert one of the last panels on each side and attach the front panel to it. So, here we go. Okay. 
way. We need to push out here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, once we uh, have finished one side and attached the front wall, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We put in the last panel, same trick, gets a little bit trickier by this time, the last panel. Okay, guys, now we go from the binner. No, I'm hanging up here, yeah, there. Okay. Here. Now, we need somebody on the inside to push out. Yeah. Once you've installed your front panels, it all gets capped off with this house shaped uh, aluminum plate, which is screwed on with the half inch Phillips head screw. I always thread these in a little to the plate and then aim it on there and screw it in. and then the front of the greenhouse is complete. Today, we are going to be adding the revisions to the Riga greenhouse. How the roof window goes together now, uh, the corners are supplied, have these supplied corner connectors. They also go together with the L brackets. The other way, there was a 45 degree. That's gonna be in your original video. This is in the add-on. First off, you want to take the top piece put it up at the top this will be your bottom piece first off you want to thread two bolts into the bottom piece for the automatic opener now we're going to assemble the roof window using our new plastic corner pieces first you want to insert the aluminum L bracket then you want to slide in the plastic corner piece, making note that you do not knock it on the table because you can bend and break this end. It's better if you just give it a light tap with the hammer and it will go in very easily. Then take this piece with your bottom rung, line the two up, and tap in. Then when those two pieces are lined up correctly, take your supplied Allen wrench and tighten down the aluminum corner piece. Now we will move on to the other side. The other side, insert your aluminum L bracket, insert the plastic corner piece making sure you don't hammer it on the table because that will break the end of it. Lightly tap it in. And then insert in the bottom window piece. Tighten down the aluminum L bracket with the supplied Allen wrench. And then the lower part of the door frame is assembled. Now we're going to install the polycarbonate panel into the roof window frame. After you've built your lower frame, 
take your polycarbonate window, piece with the blue, sh with the white stripe out, insert it into the grooves on either side of the lower window frame. Now we're going to install the top piece to the roof window. Make sure you've already installed your plastic corner brackets and your aluminum L brackets. Start one end first, lining up with the holes in the vertical bars here. And then start the other side so everything's a little loose and it makes it easier to line things up. And hammer it down on, making sure not to use the head of the hammer in the wood so you don't scar the aluminum and also try not to bang on the plastic because if possible it could break. And once you have all the corners flush and everything looks fine, tighten the Allen wrenches, the Allen heads on the L aluminum L brackets. and the roof window is finished. Hello, now we're going to assemble the upper portion of the front door. What is included is the door hinges, all the nuts and bolts, the door handle, and top corner connectors. These are gonna be the two side pieces of the door. This is the lower piece, you can see the end of that, and this is the top piece. And you also have your piece of polycarbonate. Now we're going to start the assembly of the upper portion of the front door. What you want to do is take your top piece, start it sliding down one side of the polycarbonate, making sure the lettering is on the outside because that's going to be the side with the uh, UV coating on it. Now I'm sliding it down from the end. You could also try and push it on from the end, but these uh, pieces fit together very tight. So it's not going to make it very easy to push on from the end. In fact, it has a very tight fit going this way too. <clears throat> Just push it down so each side has the same amount of excess hanging over. Spin it around to the other side. Now you're going to take your bottom half slide that piece down the same way you did the top piece. So these sides are have the same amount of excess hanging on. Now you're going to take <clears throat> one of those side pieces. You'll be able to tell each side piece the bottom of them each has a little bit of overhang on the bottom. So you put it with the groove for the uh, weather strip on the outside. So the little overhang comes down to the bottom. They each go on the outside. And then you just place it. You don't have to slide it over. It's gonna fit, slid on just like that. And you wanna take two of the supplied screws that came with it. There's two, two screw holes down here at the bottom. Go ahead and insert them through. Make sure you're gonna get them in there straight. And you can take either a drill or a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm using a drill for a little bit quicker. Just get them in there. Don't tighten them down yet as you, as you don't have the whole door together and you may want it to move around a little bit to get all the pieces in. Now we're going to the top section. What you're going to do here is take one of your it's a little plastic corner piece. And you're gonna match up the groove on the side with the groove on the top with these two. And it's just gonna snap down in there. Make sure that corner is all nice and straight. Take another one of your Phillips head screws, thread it in, and 
tighten it down. Now we're going to move on to the other side. Goes together the same way. <clears throat> Take your little bracket, push it in the top. Take one, one screw, one Phillips head, thread it in, make sure it hits the hole. Go ahead and tighten it down. Two more Phillips heads at the bottom, just like you did on the other side. And the frame of the door is complete. Now we're going to install all the accessory pieces onto the door. I've already installed one of the sash locks right here. I'm going to go ahead and install another one. It comes with <clears throat> about a half inch long Phillips head screw. We just feed it into the little holes on it. And then screw it in and that's done. Now also going to roll the door over, install the one half of the door hinges, these also have supplied screws in the kit. Install the door handle into the door. This is what's included in your door handle kit. Included is a shiny machine screw. You are not going to use that. You're going to use the dull one because it's longer and you need the extra length. First off, thread the door handle through the door. Roll it over. Install the big supplied nut on the back side of the door handle. There's, there's a cutout notch on here for the actual latch. It goes in the down position. On the latch, that's where this piece of rubber slides on. Just slide that on there real quick. Then you take your inside door latch and it can either be mounted horizontally or vertically. You take the big dull bolt, tighten it down. Make sure to not tighten it too tight because you may crack this. It doesn't need to be super tight, just snug. And you have the door handle installed. Another something you can need to know, the shiny screw that comes in this, you are not going to need it at all. You can just go ahead and throw it away. And also, you can uh, test with installing your door handle different ways, put the key in and unlock it so it spins when you're putting it together and you can actually install the door handle in different positions if that's, it suits you better. Last thing you're going to do to finish off your door is to install the T-seal into the small groove around the outside. You just get it and work it in just like that. Sometimes you can get it to press in pretty easily. Work it around the corner. Just do like that around the whole door and that'll finish it off. Up here is the part two of the door hinge. It consists of a uh, C-shaped bracket and a hinge pin right now. You can just hold onto the hinge pin for the time being. 
go ahead and screw through there. And then the pre-drilled holes for the top door in the greenhouse are gonna get this. Again, we're using our one inch long beveled head Phillips, Phillips head screwdriver. installing the door and the pins uh, later on when we get finished with all our doors. What we're going to assemble now is the lower half of the front door. What comes with this kit is the four corner connectors, a couple hinges, sash lock, and all the various screws to assemble it, five pieces of aluminum, and a piece of polycarbonate. To start the assembly, you need to find the top piece to the door, which is the one piece of aluminum that has two screw holes screwed in this part of it. Also, you can see them through the other side. And then also you want the square tube. You can see it has two screw holes in the bottom mid also. What you need to do is install the square stoppers on each end. And then run a piece of your T-seal down <clears throat> the one side of the upper piece here. Sometimes this T-seal can be tricky. If you just give a little squirt of WD-40, it makes it slide in better and the WD-40 will eventually evaporate off. Or you can use water. Now you're going to install the square tube onto the upper piece. <clears throat> what you want to ensure is the holes are not drilled in the center. You want to ensure that when you have it screwed in, that it mashes up against this other piece and makes a really good seal. So if you put the short side in, it should match up just right to get everything flush on this side and tight on the outside. Now to screw it together, you want to use the screws with the round top. The other ones have a flat top and that goes for the assembly part of the other part. Go ahead and slide it through. Make sure you find your hole. Again, I'm using the drill. You can also use a Phillips head screwdriver to get the job done just as well. Again, another round top screw. Now that's a simple. Now you want to pick out 
the two side pieces. This is going to be your top piece. One of the side pieces has screw holes for the sash lock. One of the side pieces does not. Side pieces can also be identified in that they have screw holes screwed through each end of it. The bottom piece has no holes in it at all. So now what we're going to do is take your top piece, slide it on a piece of the polycarbonate, take the bottom piece, slide it on a piece of polycarbonate. <clears throat> also included in the door kit is two white blocks. The white blocks you're going to want to put in between the polycarbonate and the aluminum profile when you're sliding these together. That will make for a, a tighter fit of the piece of polycarbonate and the actual frame. To install the side pieces, you want to go ahead and pre-install your little end cover connectors here, making sure the channels all line up. Okay, now the side with the screw holes for the sash lock is going to go on this right side and it'll just slide on over. Everything should line up perfectly. And go ahead and use this time the screws with the flat top through the screw holes to screw this in. On the other side of the door goes the side piece with the four screw holes in it for your door hinges. It slides on just like the other one did. Use the again the flat top screws. Go ahead and thread them in by hand, making sure you've got the uh, right hole on the inside. Tighten those down. That completes the frame assembly of the door. If you want to flip it over, install the door hinges, just like the other ones went on. and the sash lock will go on this inside panel also. To complete the lower door assembly, what you want to do is take your T-seal, like you have on the top part of the door, and just run it again and the groove all the way around the outside. Once you've run this in the groove all the way around the outside, the lower part of the door is going to be finished. The assembly of the rear wall window goes together the exact same way the upper front door portion does. So you could use the upper front port door portion of video to build the rear wall window. The one thing that differs from the old video is the part where your window bracket screws into the aluminum bar. If you look on the lower, lower bar of the rear wall window, instead of having a bolt slot slid in, 
to install the opener bracket, you have two drilled holes, pre-drilled holes, and screws supplied. All you have to do is take the supplied screws and tighten them down into the pre-drilled holes to install the rear handle. In case you want to do what our customer here is doing, is raising the greenhouse or setting it on a 20 inch high wall, we have a kit for a door, a tall door to do that. Um, what we're doing is we built most of the greenhouse and then we, four of us just picked it up and put it on the wall that was built, previously built. But now we need to replace the old, the standard door frame with a extra long door frame. So what I'm doing is I'm removing the old door frame pieces so that we can substitute those for the long ones. What we've done is we've installed the longer vertical bars on either side of the door, cut out the floor profile and lowered it and used it as a new floor profile that goes at the bottom. This is for the drop door setup. What I'm doing now is reinstalling the top piece. This will start to finish off our front door. You get a clear tube, and that clear tube goes in the bottom of the door, in the, in the bottom frame. And that's just to keep that frame clean, just helps when things are really falling in there. That's it. And then the next thing we are going to do, we're going to install the door hinges on the wall, on the door frame, to hold the doors. So. First I'm going to do the top door. Next, I'm going to hang the door sliding the pins Okay, and that allows me to remove the film from the plastic.
that is off the top door. I'm also putting an extra, extra sash lock here. There are some holes for it lined up in the frame of the door. You can use these, this one to um, uh, close the um, window, the door also from the inside. Okay. Next thing we need to do is you get a lot of rubber seals. And the rubber seals are go at the all the way around at the bottom between on the inside of the greenhouse between the polycarbonate and the floor uh, profiles. One is a little skinnier than the other one. The right hand one is skinnier than the left hand one. And the reason for that is that the thicker one is used to fill in between the 8mm polycarbonate on the sides uh, in here while the 10 millimeter, while the thinner one goes where the thicker polycarbonate is which is the 10 millimeters in the back so let's start with this one here on the side now one side has two uh, uh, sort of uh, little pins sticking out wings the other side has three wings sticking out always make sure that the side with the most wings with the three wings sits against the polycarbonate so we push them into the groove just like that and these tend to be usually they are a little bit too long because this rubber seal will shrink over time so you will end up when they're new um, with a little bit extra at the end do not cut that off because in the heat they will shrink just leave that and as they shrink a little bit um, just push it back in on the skinny pieces for the back and the front there is one piece that is a little shorter because that needs to go in the middle section in the back the longer pieces go on the sides and in the front so I can do the skinny one here first the short piece goes in the middle A little extra length, that is fine. Um, might not look perfect, but you need it because the rubber seal does shrink. And then I do the longer piece over here. This I'm going to do all the way around, but I also have to do it on the side panels against the top. So I also have to go and step on the ladder, step ladder, and do it against the roof beam all the way along the roof beam where there are but not where the windows are for the windows you don't need to do it Okay, yeah, look, here's what I do at the top, same thing, the three grooves, or three wings against the body cabinet, and that's it. Okay, uh, when you have the extended door, which is 20 inches longer, you will have to add an additional piece of polycarbonate above the door and you're getting an extra crossbar to do that. You will also get a sheet of polycarbonate extra, but it's not cut to size in this case. You'll have to cut it to size, and it is 31 inches wide, and it is 19 and 3 eighths inches long. So then you cut that and put this bar in place. going to go through installing the roof window on the Riga greenhouse. There's a groove on the top that the groove in the top of the window slides in. All you do is match up those two and slide it down to your desired opening. Okay, on the installation of the automatic roof opener, 
here are the parts that you're going to need. Your, the, out of the box, you're going to get the actual tube that opens the window, the mechanism, and one small pin. It's quite simple. What I do makes it a little easier. Take, a, take the springs off. They pop right off. And then what you want to do is you want to thread the shock body through the threaded hole and then into the little receiver in the top. Now there will be two, there's, there's holes in the top of this shock and there's holes in the top of this little receiver here. What you want to do is you want to line those holes up with the bottom holes on the little receiver body. Now this is to be set for maximum opening in the summer. If you want it a little less, move it to the next hole up. It's your preference. You can try it and change it as needed. Now you take the little cotter pin, you just slide it through there and snap it into place. Then stretch it, push the shock in until it engages the threads. Just twist it in a little bit and then bring it down and reinstall your springs. And then you thread this in and thread it out to achieve the, the uh, distance, maximum distance and the minimum distance you would like your window to open. And that is how you assemble the automatic roof opener. Here's how to install the automatic roof window opener on the actual roof window. You have a top piece which has two rungs. It's going to correspond with the two bolts that you installed in the top and the roof window. And the bottom piece has one bolt that goes in this middle piece of this rung. First off, measure. It's 40 inches wide, so measure in 20 inches to get it centered in the middle of the window. And then you take this piece, install your nuts. Try not to drop them, especially in gravel. What you want to do, make sure that the bottom of the roof, automatic roof window opener, the bracket, is level with the bottom of the roof window so that it doesn't impact it when the window shuts all the way. Alan, I have our MCQ computers. I have one back here. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's not gonna work. And then install the bottom bolt into the center bolt hole of the bottom bracket. Turn the shock body to the desired open length height, and you're done. Also, if you're going to have a high wind situation or a storm's coming in and you need to shut the window all the way, you squeeze in the bottom of the body of the roof window, and it will shut all the way down. And that way, it won't blow off if there's a heavy wind storm. And that is how you install the automatic roof window open.
in this in the case of uh, where there is a lot of wind like this greenhouse is which is very exposed what we have is maybe on a solution is to put a uh, two automatic windows openers on each window because of the very width of the window so we put one on the outer corners outer edges of each window the nice thing about these automatic window openers is that you can actually override them manually even if they're open you know it's going to be very stormy you might want to manually close them by just squeezing these bottom arms together and let the windows lower back down um, and you can put them just as easy back again whenever you want want to as also so also in the winter or days where you think it's going to be uh, warm if you don't want them open yet because you want high humidity inside you can override it by leaving the, the window down that way um, in addition how does the, are these are these automatic window openers automatic is that there is a special paraffin oil it's an English invention inside these black tubes and it expands in heat about 70 degrees and up it starts to expand and um, when it becomes below the 75 70 degrees they contract and the openers close again you can adjust them by turning them there's a thread on this tube here and it gives you more or less opening depending on how much you want or need uh, in your work type of climate wherever you are in the, in the United States. Now we're going to go through the install and assembly of the shelving unit. What we have here is a shelving brace and down here we have the L bracket that consists of the back brace for the greenhouse and it is the back part of the shelving. The L bracket itself has holes in one side and the other side does not. And the side without the holes, you need to slide in as many shelf supports you have, slide in that number of bolts in the bottom of it. That will be screwed onto here. You come around the back, it goes through the support, and then it's tightened with the nut. Next, what we're doing is getting the front support bar of the shelf ready as well. So on the, the L, it's another L bracket with no holes in it. It will sit like this, but it needs three, depending on the length of your greenhouse you have, it needs bolts, the same amount of bolts in the front of the L bracket as you have curved uprights, because this will support with a chain from the upright. Underneath, you will need to have as many bolts uh, evenly spaced out as you have shelf supports that we did on the back. These need to be attached to the front. But you also need one extra bolt at each end for a little bracket that goes and holds the shelf uh, lateral support in place. So we have put all these in there. I'm going to lay it down. And now we can take the front and the back and we can tighten down all these supports. Once we have built the frame of the bottom shelf, we need to attach it to the lateral to the vertical supports in the back. So we're going to line up all the holes and get these through here. This will also these lateral supports from front to back are also going to keep the whole greenhouse together. So even if you have no shelf, you use these same crossbars in the back to hold your greenhouse together. Okay, well, in addition, uh, as a support, we want to tie the front uh, shelf support or lateral support from front to back 
to these little crossbars. That's why we inserted some extra screws and uh, bolts there. And I'm going to put this little L bracket, so you get a little L bracket, and uh, put it over the screw. Both screws line up the, uh, the bolts a little bit, like that, and then put nuts on them, and we are in business. And now we are installing the top uh, lateral support from front to back, holding the whole greenhouse together, all the frame. And I'm making the distance between the bottom one and the top one three feet. I mark that quickly so that we have a little bit of an idea where we need to be. Now after marking where the top support beam is going to go, we're going to line our the top of our support beam with our marks. Now the top of the support beam against the black mark. And insert our screws through the holes and attach nuts to And then we will tighten it all down, make sure it's level, and then going on to hanging the chains for the lower shelf. The last thing we do on the bottom shelf is we insert the polycarbonate sh sheets, which is basically the bottom of the shelf. And these are made out of expensive polycarbonate in order for you for the light to come through as much as possible. If you had four of these shelves and they were any other material, the light would not get as much even distribution as this. The light comes through these. This is very nice. If you're concerned about drainage, there's at the ends of the bottom that can go out, you can take a drill and just punch some holes in there or drill some holes in there if you want extra drainage, but usually it goes away. Now what we need to do is hang these chains to support the shelf and we do that from each uh, upright vertical down to the um, down to the bottom support beam. In order to do that, we have to assemble the hooks at the top. Uh, there's a little T uh, bolt with a T head on it. What we do with that is we attach a regular nut to it. First, we do a little nut to it. Leave about a quarter over an inch of space. Then we attach this hexagon, I don't know, a real big nut. There's some space, and then we do this circle, an eye bolt. All of this comes together, and we can tighten that in a minute. What I do now is I line this up with this bar and with the vertical, and I'm going to go and thread this if they are a little tight I thread my chain onto the bolt in the front like that that's the easiest way most popularly to do it you can make them bigger but they like them tight so I just thread them on there okay this way we know roughly where we're going to have to put the eye hook in the top. Um, also from this eye hook is going to hang an S hook on which the chain will hang. Now, I'm going to try to find some placement. I do not need to be at the top. I want to be maybe straight. Usually I like to be straight, so depending on where you want to put the shelf, I can be the top Maybe I'm not going even going to do. I may take the third link.
Like that. Now, now the trick is to turn the T. T as much as you can. And we need to tighten it. Ah, okay, then I am adjusting the big nut. Get everything a little tight. Do at the front, the little knobs, protection knobs, so that you don't hurt yourself walking in and out of them. And that's it. Now we can do all the other ones like that as well. Your greenhouse has been supplied with, uh, I think, about eight, depending on the size of your greenhouse, multiple of these little L brackets. They are so that you can attach your greenhouse frame to either a deck, for instance or to like in this case a concrete base or a concrete wall um, a, whatever it might be they help you to attach to it if you don't have the optimal the optional base that we sell that you could put in the dirt in this case what you would do on a concrete wall you would sink anchor bolts concrete anchor bolts into the concrete and set these on top of it and attach them with a the bolt and a nut to the uprights to the curved uprights